Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this webinar on tackling the urban freight logistics uh, challenge. My name is Katharina Krell, and I'm a thematic expert for low carbon economy at the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon. A few introductory words uh, before we kick off. As usual, we are recording uh, our webinars and the recordings will be made available to you in a few days. You will receive the link directly uh, in your email inbox. Along with the recordings, you will receive uh, the presentations and um, so you can follow up later on. The audience uh, cannot speak. However, you can interact uh, with us through the, through the control panel. Of your of your webinar you have uh, on the right hand side a little control bar where you can type uh, questions and we also have polls uh, for the audience uh, to interact with us um, in the handout you can discover documents and we also post uh, interesting hyperlinks uh, in the chat so uh, i'm not here alone i would like to introduce uh, uh, the team that has organized this webinar with me uh, simon and lotte please uh, show yourself your faces. Okay, this is uh, Simon Hankin, uh, the other expert in low carbon uh, economy, who will be moderating uh, the chat uh, and uh, reading the questions from the audience uh, to the speakers. And uh, this is Lotte von Mail, who is our technical web expert, who will tackle all your technical questions that you might have. Thank you. Okay, two words about uh, who is behind the organization of this webinar. I have seen from the registration list that uh, the audience uh, is mostly from the Interreg Europe community, so you know our program and I'll be brief. Um, Simon, next slide. So uh, we are having the webinar organized in the frame of the Interreg Europe policy learning platform. The goal of the platform is to foster interregional uh, knowledge exchange. And uh, we do this uh, with four services, which are a knowledge hub, physical, uh, real expert uh, support, a community which we animate uh, with webinars like this and thematic events uh, when we are able to hold some, and uh, an awesome good practice uh, database. So uh, we have four topics that we serve. Here, of course, you are in the mobility topic uh, within the low carbon area, and uh, the other topics that we serve is environment and resource efficiency, SME competitiveness and research and uh, innovation. To illustrate a little bit uh, uh, what we do uh, in terms of uh, writings, uh, next slide, we'll show you that uh, we have, uh, for instance, written a lot of uh, policy briefs already in the area of mobility. The most relevant for today's topic is certainly the sustainable urban logistics policy brief uh, fresh from the press but uh, we've already looked at other urban strategies uh, and uh, of course also how to foster active modes of transport and the use of public transport. All right, so uh, uh, why an, a webinar on urban logistic policies? Many of you have voted for this topic uh, in our last community survey and as usual we pick up the topics uh, that you indicate uh, as uh, of importance uh, to your work. Now, what is it that we're talking about? Mm, we have the name urban, urban city logistics, but uh, there are other groups uh, that talk about um, urban freight transport or UFT. So uh, this is defined uh, by the European Technology Platform on Logistics as all movements of goods into, out of, and within an urban area by light and heavy vehicles, and including service transport, construction material transport, demolition traffic, also shopping trips, and also reverse logistics like the removal of uh, uh, waste and, and the returns management, of course. So all these movements that um, are done by small lorries or big trucks, they are causing quite a, a nuisance and, and quite a challenge. And we have seen a strong increase uh, of these uh, in recent times. Now we have no Interreg Europe project that is uh, working specifically on the topic, but some touch it. 
the clauses being resolved. And there are also good practices uh, from other projects, and we certainly have the expertise uh, within our community. Now, I would like to query the audience uh, in a poll, um, rather than explain the negative side effects, uh, I would ask uh, you, which of the following negative side effects uh, do you connect with urban logistics? And you can just uh, tick, uh, uh, I hope one or several of the following. It should have been a multiple choice. Let's see how many you can tick. Uh, do you associate traffic accidents uh, with vulnerable road users with logistics or congestion, air pollution, noise, and extensive occupation of the curbside? Let's see a little bit uh, uh, which of the side effects come to mind. Okay, so this was a single choice. I apologize for that. It should have been multiple choice because probably you would have said many of these come to mind. Okay, so the first association is congestion. The second, air pollution. Uh, strong occupation of the curbside. Noise, none of you. Interesting. Okay. All right. And um, let's see a follow-up uh, question. How many cities uh, have already got a logistics uh, a strategy, a proper one. So here, here it should have been one selection. Yes, I have a strategy in my city or a strategy is currently under development or we have identified individual measures but no overall strategy yet. Not yet, but we're thinking about it or no, the topic is not on our agenda yet. Uh -huh. So, almost 30% already have one. That is uh, um, a good, a good result. But then there is 70% that doesn't have any. And uh, uh, many of you, individual measures, are starting to think about it. Okay. So thank you for these uh, uh, insights. It's clear that regional and local authorities face a number of challenges in trying to, to counteract these negative uh, impacts of urban logistics. And uh, one of the main challenges is very often a lack of experience in managing logistics, which is a bit different than managing the rest of the mobility flow, I would say. And therefore, we are proposing uh, you to discover the topic through a keynote from a, a veteran uh, in urban logistics, uh, as well as two concrete examples of how cities are addressing the logistics challenge. And I would like to introduce uh, our speakers. Please show, your, show yourselves on the camera so that uh, the audience can discover you. Okay, so um, we will start uh, um, the program with a little interview with uh, Michal uh, Anczak uh, from the city of Warsaw. Um, Public Road Authority. Hello, Michal. This will be followed uh, by a keynote uh, uh, from uh, Georgia Ifantopoulou, who is a research director at the Hellenic Institute of Transport uh, uh, at the CERT. Hello, Georgia. Hi, Hi Katarina. And then uh, we will have uh, two speakers uh, uh, from the Nordic countries. Sami Sahala from uh, Forum Virium Helsinki uh, will share uh, experiences uh, on his uh, pilot. Hi, Sami. And Olive Moon, last but not least, uh, uh, from the National Center for Municipal Co Distribution of Goods, uh, will explain how Sweden has used the power of public procurement to reduce the freight into the city. Hi, Olive. All right. Good. Um, you may all switch off your camera apart from Michal. So let's start with a short uh, interview. Michal, um, Simon, you can turn off the presentation. Thank you. Michal, you work at the Public Road Authority of the city of Warsaw. And your city, your organization has used the peer review service that the Interreg Europe Policy Learning Platform is offering for free to local and regional authorities. and I invite you to tell us a little bit about it. 
So what was the motivation uh, to ask for a peer review? Mm, yeah. Uh, first, we op the first the all the ideas come from our observations from the streets. So we recognize that we have a lot of trucks, a lot of traffic in the in the city center, and so we are we were a part of the program. Uh, in the um, other European Union pro projects, uh, so we are start thinking what we can do, uh, what we can do with with uh, that problem, which increasing traffic in the city center. Um, so, so we decided to to, to ask Interreg Europe uh, for some help from from experts uh, in in uh, in kind of a webinar. Uh, because that was the, it was uh, last year we started our thinking about it. Uh, so it is a very, uh, very early pandemic times. Yes, the peer review was supposed to be a two day physical meeting and the experts should have come and visit you, uh, uh, including myself uh, in Warsaw. But uh, we had to move the, the peer review to an online format. Uh, so we spent uh, two days uh, online together and it was quite an interesting uh, and intense uh, exchange. But uh, the city of Warsaw is updating its mobility policy and uh, you wanted to create a new chapter on logistics policies, right? Yeah, um, we came back to the, to the votes like uh, we do a while ago. That's the worst of right now is uh, have some um, some measures, but we have no general logistic uh, strategy plan. So uh, city like big uh, big like Warsaw, I think we we should do some, something like that with that. Um, so right now we are creating our policy. Uh, and we need a special uh, extra power to push uh, to to write some uh, very clearly, very uh, intense uh, to our strategic uh, documents. Mm. So, how did you perceive the peer review process? Um, how we perceive? Uh, it's, it starts uh, a few months, uh, few months uh, before the the meeting. Uh, it was very, 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 very easy for us. I remember that uh, we prepare uh, from our side the whole uh, theory and the whole information about the the, the Warsaw when we send it to to India, Europe, and. Uh, yeah, in the end, uh, in the end, we find a lot of uh, we get uh, feedback with with that that we we can manage it from from uh, from Interreg Europe, and uh, the meeting was uh, was happened. Yeah. So yes. first, you have to prepare uh, documents like uh, uh, information about your city. Uh, some, of course, uh, some of course uh, documents uh, which is necessary to to do a project like that, and that's it. Mm, yes, it's uh, we try to make it as smooth and as easy uh, as possible. You formulate uh, your challenge in uh, uh, two or three questions, and then yeah. provide some background information so that the experts can make relevant uh, uh, contributions. So. Let's say last question. What was the benefit? Uh, um, was were the recommendations from the experts uh, useful? Oh, so many. Uh, but uh, we uh, right now we know that the uh, safety uh, is uh, most uh, important for us. So we have to uh, start thinking uh, about around uh, that because. It's that's the, the, the uh, most important for citizens. And we 
as I said, we don't have a general policy in the in logistic plan. So right now we know that we have to start with the small parts of a, a small part of logistic plans, uh, not taking the whole city in uh, in uh, one uh, one document. It's very very hard, but uh, it's uh, uh, but the creating some uh, pilot products, which is uh, um, very, very um, important to, to do with, uh, with uh, um, creating log logistic plans. So uh, first, uh, we have, we feel strongly and prepared for doing small projects to uh, increase our logistic plans in Warsaw. Thank you, Michal. Yes, the the recommendation was to start in one area and in one sector and I think you chose the construction uh, uh, sector because you have big works uh, uh, planned uh, in the center of Warsaw. So, thank you. Okay, with, with that uh, I would like to uh, call uh, uh, Georgia to uh, uh, the floor. Thank you Michal, you may switch off which was one of uh, our much. experts uh, during the peer review and um, Georgia is going to frame the rest of the webinar with a keynote on the methodology on how to go about in the development of a sustainable urban logistics uh, strategy. Over to you. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you. I'm very happy participating in this event uh, um, and uh, happy for, for being invited to this. Uh, allow me to make uh, share my screen here. It's okay. I think you can see now all the um, so, good afternoon to everybody. Um, what you will follow as a presentation is uh, a focus on the, on the urban logistics challenges and the practical, um, let's say, practical uh, recommendations for creating a logistics plan. Uh, this everything that you see starts from this topic guide of LTS, uh, where you can find the uh, uh, documentation, especially for those that they are running the 70% of the poll of uh, Katarina that they don't started working on, uh, on sustainable urban logistics. Uh, I was uh, main author of this uh, topic guide, but uh, it was all, it is also enriched this presentation from. Um, um, Sorry, um, I, I need to escape. Hello? Do you, do you still hear me? Yes. Because, okay, I will do it this way. But it is also enriched this information with, um, with experience from our, from our, of our organization, from the EAT Urban Mobility, uh, where we are core partners and we're running a regional innovation hub from the, the Mobility Living Labs organization in Europe from our participation in LTIS uh, editorial board and also from managing a smart mobility and city logistics uh, uh, cluster, uh, which gives us a lot, a lot of information from, uh, from, from the industry. These are the eight or six, depending on the document you refer, steps in order to create a sustainable logistics plan. I cannot refer to all of them. What I want to mention here is that we need to develop a SALP as a separate and it's related, of course, to the SAMP plan. If we want to stop having pilots in our cities and to achieve an integrated planning and create viable uh, business models for the solutions that we will introduce in our cities, then we need to have a plan, a concrete plan. And of course, everybody can consult the guidelines and the best practices uh, uh, for that. The contemporary challenges in planning are related with the stakeholders, how I engage them for a long period. Is it different to, fake, to have a meeting? Is it different to have engagement for a long period? Because the plan needs engagement for a long, a long period, organizing the, 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 the interventions and then following up this, the, the impact of these interventions. We need to have a very good understanding of the, the UFT and the emerging new services. We have seen COVID things started, the, the, the solutions, the, the private sector, the logistics industry introduced in our cities have differentiated. So the city needs to know what is the current situation and how the emerging things are happening and what is their impact in their cities. 
Then uh, we, everybody has the question from where to start, how to create my strategy. I try to give some answers to that. And of course, at the end, there is an issue of measures, how I create a, a mixture of measures that uh, is the appropriate for my, for my cities and uh, how I can monitor and assess. So uh, what do you need in order to have the stakeholders uh, engaged is to set up a working structure, to have uh, inside the municipality or the region, the city logistics is now usually become a regional uh, issue um, uh, to, uh, to, to, to create a structure and people uh, and to use also external support in order to handle this planning uh, process. Uh, it is very important also to, to establish the city logistics multi-stakeholder platforms and if possible to institutionalize it, to create a structure that is there and everybody understand what is their role and what is their duty and the mandate from the, from the city uh, to, to perform in a specific period of time. Um, when you, you start this, this cooperation with the different stakeholders, of course, you can move to create partnerships, to create MOUs, and to, to make clear what is the responsibility of the city and what are the responsibilities of the other involved. Who are these other involved in this multi-stakeholder platform? They can be express couriers, as you see there in the example of Italy, industrial stakeholders association, retailers. Uh, a, a good uh, proposition uh, for the mixture of this um, of this multi-stakeholder platform is shown in this transparency, where you need to have uh, a good representation of the supply chain stakeholders, up to 25%, public authorities and other stakeholders, um, industrial commerce association also being present in this multi-stakeholder platform. Um, the, the second thing is, okay, understanding my problem and understanding the evolution that is happening in the city logistics in my area. What I need to do, I need to identify information source. We need data. Data are, for city logistics are private and they are not easily shared by, by, with the public actors. So identify the data owners for your case and try to create collaborations for, for, in order for them to share it. If you are a municipality and you are really strong and committed to get this data, then you can also use uh, the, the data provisioning from the private sector as a counterpart for the license or service operations. So I'm giving you the license to operate in my area, but I want you to have every year or every six months this and this information from you. Use the technology, and I will come back to this, online databases, and uh, uh, use your experts and, of course, engage the, the citizens. Um, the Living Lab uh, 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 solution is something that I will come uh, next. Data and technology for collecting data is very, very popular these days. So everybody says, that, okay, if I get the trucks and the movement of the trucks, I, as I give you as an example here from our, my city, from Thessaloniki, if I take this data and make analytics, then of course I understand that I can create the values and calculate the values of key parameters of, of that describe my, my problem. But is that enough in order to make uh, to make planning? No, it's not. You need a more and more uh, uh, continuous monitoring. And there are dashboards right now that are pursued from different companies. Here I have an example of Via Nova. This is a startup company which uh, got actually an excellence award from the uh, Eight Urban Mobility um, Innovation Accelerator. Um, who created a platform for a dashboard for mobility, but that they turn it to collect data and analyze data for city logistics. They implemented it in, in Paris and, um, and, uh, and looked on, uh, on the safety and congestion issues uh, and uh, understand uh, how, um, how, how, how the, the city logistics issue uh, increase in the, in, the, in the area of Paris and, and what will be, should be the priorities for responding to these uh, problems. It is happening, of course, with, um, uh, with the technology. It's a mobility app and the city platform. Uh, and of course, um, uh, this solution is offered for cities to use it, to implement uh, with a specific contract and collect the data uh, from, uh, for, for, for a city. But however, you, it's, it's data enough. From, from data, you need to, to, to turn to knowledge. 
And in that case, you need uh, to create, to, to follow an ecosystem approach, engage your stakeholders continuously in, uh, in data provision, but also in understanding and in decision support. You can visit the, um, uh, our living lab here in Thessaloniki, but also look on the guide of the European Network of Living Labs in order to see how you can set up a living lab and how you can involve the stakeholders in knowledge creation and then decision support uh, and mutually understanding of the problems and the priorities and create the strategy. And what we mean mutual understanding, uh, you can use, of course, the experts, except of the data that are coming from the technology or from other sources, in order to sit together and understand uh, how you can represent the, 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 the current and the future situation of UFT. So influencing factors like the one proposed by the Novelock project and Horizon 2020 project, I used to coordinate this, and the city characteristics is a, is a way to, uh, to describe the situation now and also to define your future goals for your uh, for your city and you can get support in this uh, uh, in this uh, let's say link there or of you for using tools that are available in order to put your stakeholders together and through a methodology uh, which comes uh, electronically uh, to, um, uh, uh, to, to to agree to in, in the current and the future description of your urban frame transport uh, situation. And through that process, then you can develop the vision. Everybody who has a SAP, he know, knows how to create a vision for a sustainable mobility plan. But the way we write the vision for a sustainable mobility plan is completely different by the way that we need to describe the vision of sustainable urban logistics plan. We need to align with the vocabulary of the industrial stakeholders to understand the cost benefits. We need to, and to, to use uh, quantified indicators and how things um, uh, should, should change and where um, we by implementing uh, in, in what in, in, uh, by affecting which um, influencing factor we expect to have uh, a future um, a new characteristic. So uh, more information about that uh, you can uh, you can find in this uh, novel um, uh, platform. Um, build and Johnny assess the scenario of measures. So uh, how I can start? Okay, I have my goals I have created. I agree with all everybody about my current and the future situation. How I start selecting measures and how I can create the scenario and the mixture of the measures. First of all, you need to understand the value interactions in the city. Usually we have the city, the consumer and the logistics industry. And I will give you an example where there are paradox there and you need to study the paradox. The consumer is asking for a C from, from the city authority to have a CO2 free city, but at the same time they are asking for more uh, uh, small quantities, flexibility and low cost in, uh, in, uh, from logistics industry, which increase uh, the number of vehicles and the number of trips for city logistics and, uh, uh, and deliveries in the city. So uh, once you map this, you need to communicate to all these stakeholders how they can contribute in solving the problem and in make it uh, and, uh, and agree on, on, on steps. Uh, the second uh, step in creating a scenario is to select in the multi-stakeholder platform meeting the type of intervention in accordance to the goals that you set. So you can have an area-focused intervention, which is a short-term holistic, but you focus only on an area. Then you can have industry segment-focused intervention, so you can take supermarkets, you can take construction logistics, and you can speak uh, horizontally for, for, for all your city, and then you have medium-term specific intervention. And of course, you can look on infrastructure and technology development uh, like uh, electric vehicles, like uh, consolidation and micro consolidation hubs and there is a more uh, medium long term again holistic approach but with a lot of innovation. The third step is to secure the contribution of each stakeholder in the scenario and the measures and this is happening by developing service level agreements. We have exams from like Copenhagen here where after concluding what it should, should be done, all the stakeholders agreed in their role and, 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 and this engagement was really very strong there. We need to assess the scenario. So having a platform like the one I show you that they collect in, uh, in, in Paris, the data, or like the one I saw you in Thessaloniki collecting information from different stakeholders, why you do, you, you, you do that? You do it in order to assess continuously the impact and based on the problems to be in a position to, uh, to change your measure or to add measures. There are tools that can help you there. 
Uh, and, and this is one example of, um, of uh, again, of a novel toolkit where, according to your characteristics, you can get answers on what type of message you need to, to, uh, to implement uh, and, of course, align with your, uh, with your goals. What I, what I mentioned here that is important is the cooperative business models for, uh, for city logistics solutions. We create uh, good ideas, we implement them. When the public funding is available, then we lose them because collaboration between the different stakeholders is not there. This is the very important role of the, of, of the cities, authorities, to bring them together in the, in the multi-stakeholder platform and discuss how they can cooperate in order to, to have economically viable solutions and measures in your, uh, in your city. Um, Okay, however, we are in a situation that uh, we, innovation is coming, things are changing. How to incorporate this innovation and how to create a resilient sustainable logistics plans? This is something on which we are working now. There are not, not all the, the answers are, are, are in, in, on the table. So research projects like Sprout, where I, uh, I, I do some technical coordination there, they follow it, but they create a methodology and the, and the idea is to create narrative description of the scenarios that everybody understand and then create, use KPIs uh, in order to assess the impact of each one of the measures and the interventions. Living labs, uh, life cycle evaluation are methodologies that are, methodologies that are, uh, that are important. Uh, when you, you finish, uh, this is my last uh, slide, Katharina, thank you. You need to agree on actions and responsibilities. Um, here is an example of, um, of, of, of um, let's say, of um, um, collaborative business, de uh, business models development for urban consolidation center, for micro consolidation center, for received um, uh, uh, other, other solutions uh, using business model canvas. You can be easily guided uh, uh, through the, um, uh, the novel of toolkit through that, but also without the toolkit, uh, with your experts and, uh, and, and, um, and, um, and the neutral uh, partners that you can involve in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Georgia. You always have the challenge uh, to explain a whole journey in 10 to 15 minutes. I know it's a, it's a challenge. Um, thank you for having pointed out uh, the many tools uh, and guides uh, that uh, exist already that policymakers uh, can refer to and they are all linked up in your presentation and I can uh, only encourage people to discover them. This is very dense. I think the most important thing that you mentioned is logistics is a business, it's an industry and it works with the logic of cost and benefit and policymakers have to take into account that there are business models that have to work. So uh, I think uh, 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 this we will take uh, into the discussion uh, at the end uh, with the rest of the panelists. And I thank you very much uh, for your intervention. And uh, I'm asking uh, uh, Sami to, uh, to come online. So Sami from uh, Forum Virium uh, Helsinki um, is going to explain us uh, how, let's say, a parking uh, uh, and slot management uh, has been tackled uh, in Helsinki. Sami, over to you. Yep, that and um, maybe a little bit more. Um, sorry, this might look stupid, but just to be on the safe side, I, I will use the uh, I keep the microphone in in front of my my face. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Sami Sahala coming from Helsinki Forum. Virium Helsinki is actually uh, the uh, hold on uh, the um, uh, innovation agency of city of Helsinki. So we are part of the city organization, non-profit organization, only working for the city, not on the market, just to clarify that. Uh, yes, uh, I was about to tell you a little bit what we've been doing for logistics in Helsinki, a little bit beyond what, what it promises there on, on the title. Um, I think the starting point quite often is, is this. Uh, you have quite busy times in, in, in your streets, in the city, every city. And now when I talk to the, the um, logistics companies that why is it like that? Uh, we often get more like mostly negative feedback that, that we, we are not really getting any support from you or the main mode of communication between us is basically the parking tickets that we get all the time. 
so clearly there's, there's room for uh, different type of approach uh, more cooperation so what can you do uh, well as cities we normally do we, we regulate we ban this and then we forbid that basically try to control uh, any way we can another way to approach it would be to do it yourself a um, number of cities have, have made the, the decision that they, they actually may know how to do it better uh, and can have uh, invested in consolidate consolidation centers sometimes even operating them uh, and then the third part is and this is what we do in helsinki i try to do uh, as as the uh, first uh, type of approach is that we try to help uh, the the industry in this case logistic industry we try to help and enable make it as easy as possible for them to do their business uh, and then be successful in that number of things how to how to do that but today i really want to focus only on the last one the data and then the question is what what happens when you put logistics city and data those three words together what what comes out well, we really don't know the answer but we're willing to explore um when i talk to the uh, cities um, about this that they I often get feedback that we are already sharing everything we have everything's open what more do you want um, another point to raise is that cities don't often have the best expertise on logistics themselves uh, but again cities don't really see that as a problem cities do what they they always do to hire consults come over uh, write us a report a roadmap something and a problem solved now when talking to the companies again uh, they claim that that the data that they are being what they're able to access and, and use uh, on basis of, of their the job uh, that's far from perfect sometimes really far from perfect and, and i agree it, it it should be much better uh, in, in terms of quality another point is that much of the delays and, and, and basically why their job is, is not as smooth as possible are the delays in, in finding a spot, how to do that last meter of, of logistics. And quite often that links to parking and finding locating parking and then locating the, the actually the, the precise point where to do that delivery. Um, so what what can we do for that and this is something what we've been doing uh, first of all enhance the space uh, look at basically try to solve with with infrastructure this is what cities do um, but then i want to really point out the, the the one on top left corner there the picture that that we have as many cities have dedicated parking spots for logistics for loading and, and unloading so nice that's that's fun uh, but how can you uh, enhance that? So again, make sure that the uh, everything's online, everything's available. Make sure that the data regarding for those parking spots, for example, is is much more accurate. But again, we need to have it up to date. Um, that's one of the challenges for cities. Uh, for example, city planning is based on or traffic, traffic uh, transport planning, especially is based on statistics the the uh, function of mobility on top of that infrastructure is based on more and more real-time data and that cities don't really see why they should be the one uh, providing that information or at least they are not capable of doing that it's getting better but that, that's basically what we need to, to focus on so what we've been doing is is monitoring these uh, parking spots which are for logistics you see like for a camera there and then provide that information to the drivers themselves uh, whether seeing the picture live picture from that or, or providing it in, in kind of traffic lights with a screen or red if it's occupied adds something that really simple but the um, the drivers like it that the companies like it uh, it seems to be with some, sometimes with these little tricks you can do a, a quite big impact not stopping there uh, we also need to think that why do we always have to do everything by ourselves as a city? Uh, should we learn to try to uh, cooperate a bit, little bit more? And that's again what we're doing now. Uh, this is the latest one. 
this idea comes from the fact that there's a lot of information out there that could be useful uh, and, and helpful for the driver, especially doing that the last mile delivery. But that data is not available. It's it's data that, if, as an example, you are given an address where to deliver a package, but you should be you, you should know that actually the place where to do all these deliveries is another door. It's 30 meters down the road. It's sometimes around the corner uh, in, a, in a courtyard, but you are not given that information. You know that next time when you go there, but then again, there are thousands and thousands of places to learn. Should we, could we somehow as a city uh, provide that information, which we don't own, it's not available, but that's what we're doing. We are collecting that, crowdsourcing that information from the drivers, from the transport companies, from, from the, the real estate, uh, different stakeholders over there, the, uh, also the, the customers like uh, restaurants, shops, where lots of deliveries are made, and put that information all together, provide it as an open data, provide different uh, tools to, to collect that data and, and use that and access that data, everything's open. So it's early stage, which is now going on, but but we are really getting uh, ha having high hopes for that kind of approach. Uh, if you want to learn more or just use the stuff that we made, uh, please uh, contact me. So what's what's next? What, where is this leading to? These kind of examples. What are we trying to achieve with this? Um, and I'd say as a, as a one point to 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 raise here is that. Many cities are now developing their digital wins from different uh, backgrounds, from with maybe different targets, but mostly it's for city planning. Now the question is, how can mobility in general, logistics especially, benefit from those digital wins? What needs to be in there, in, in that digital win, so that it is more and more valuable for logistics? And, and vice versa, how can for example, logistics companies provide data into cities digital wins so that it becomes more useful for the city, for users and, and the companies themselves. And this is something that we're going to explore next and I'm really happy to, to discuss and have any, basically steal your ideas on that because that's what I really want to do. All right, with that, thank you. Thank you, Sami. So um, you are crowdsourcing uh, the information and let's say if a driver wants to contribute, uh, uh, they can use, I don't know, uh, an app or somewhere. How, how do they submit this information? Yeah, we need to make it really, really simple and, and, and easy for them and actually needs to be a really quick process. Uh, and we, we even have now startups uh, already doing that for say more more nation, na, nationwide logistics, but not focusing on, on city, especially the city center logistics, which has a little bit different kind of challenges. And they are already able to get feedback and get information from drivers within seconds when you really design the user interface and provide like yes or no questions. Was this place exactly that was given as you as an information or something like that? Mm -hmm. But then again, at the same time, we are, for example, we have school kids uh, employed as summer with the summer, summer jobs going around the city and documenting different corridors and stuff. It, it comes from small streams, but yes, we're doing that. That's cool. Simon, do we have any questions from the audience? Um, just the one, actually. Um, it's asking, I'm saying, first of all, that uh, the collection of data is crucial. Uh, how long has that process of data collection taken in Helsinki? Uh, for this last one, uh, not much. I said it's it's early stages. Basically, the pro, uh, project actually started at New Year's, uh, a little bit before New Year, before Christmas, and and the main bulk of data collection will happen over the summer. But we did do a, a say proof of uh, concept type of, of version last year. It, it's actually fairly quick that you can provide a significant or meaningful amount of of data already. It, it doesn't take that long. Well, that's encouraging to hear. <laughs> yeah, but fingers crossed. Yes, so we are talking about work in progress. Well, yes. we can say yes, thank you one. for sharing this and uh, uh, let's uh, keep us uh, posted uh, on the developments. 
Thank well, you, Sami. Uh, you may switch off. I like to call uh, um, Olaf Moon now uh, to the floor to talk to us uh, about uh, the experience uh, in Vexjö with the development uh, of a consolidation center where actually the municipalities use the power of public procurement to consolidate the streams. Olaf, over to you. Thank you. Exactly. This is what it is. Um, uh, Georgia was talking about, you know, city logistics, and um, if we, I, I come from academia, so I'm part of school of economics and, and um, University of Gothenburg, and I'm part of the city logistics uh, community. And if you look at in EU, most of the initiatives have failed because when external uh, public funds are, are terminated, also the different uh, um, solutions are terminated. So I will talk about something that has been very sustainable. Um, it's been going on for over 20 years and um, it's uh, what we call municipal co-distribution of goods. And uh, we had for the past uh, three years, 2018 to 2020, um, uh, a project which was by the government and um, Next slide, please. And, and if we look at Sweden, uh, Sweden is very sparsely populated. However, most of the people live in urbanized areas, 85%. Uh, and what I'm talking about right now is, is what, what the municipalities have done. So, so it's very local level. Next slide, please. Um, and the background, no, yeah, well, yeah, it is. It is that uh, this is not done in all of the EU states because uh, in Sweden we have a very high tax base. Uh, we have a social welfare state which provide uh, groceries and other uh, goods for the population through the taxes. And for example, you know, 6% of all food in Sweden is buy by the public. Next, next please. Uh, the, um, we can also see that, uh, that what is the driving forces to, to improve transport efficiency in Sweden? Okay, we have the Volvo factory and the Scania factory that, that, that do trucks. Of course, they have a big lobby organization. So we can see like, like in, in, in uh, technical development uh, and, and in, in, in new renewable fossil fuels, it, that's, that's what the main is, but, but only, only um, uh six percent here in this study was done by a new business model or, or behavioral change next please so so uh just to uh, i do this talk for many delegations from other countries and we have a difference here between what city logistics does and and what the uh, municipality is is like a regulating authority and the municipality as a good owner by buying transport uh, and, and this is what I want to talk about. Next, please. Uh, and and what, what the municipal do is that in the procurement process, just like Katharina said, you know, the procurement is the key. And it's also the key in, in the private enterprise, you know. Uh, and and what, the, what, what, what municipal has done is that they divide the procurement process into two. So they divide uh, the procurement of goods in one, and then the other one is is, is buying a transport to, to uh, create an urban consolidation center. Next, please. And this is this is like uh, uh, one one of the basic questions which is not addressed. It's not addressed enough because uh, what we have is a situation in 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 urban. Um, in, in urban places where you have densification, but also in rural places where, which we are sparsely populated, is that the market economy will not fix you know, the provision of services. And what we do have then is that in Sweden, we have like a, a big driving force for regulation of urban freight in the same way that, that uh, public, uh, public transport is regulated. Okay, this is like, uh, in in, in many, many places, this might be a, a very infected question, 
especially from the transport industry, but it's something that we think in, in Sweden in five to 10 years is going to happen. Um, we can now go next place, next please. Uh, so, so what have made these municipalities uh, change or change their procurement process and all, all this, the purchasing process? Well, of course, this kind of business model it decrease the uh, uh, the uh, vehicle kilometers traveled by seventy to eighty percent. It also, you know, has, has you know uh, improved the traffic safety. But uh, you, you uh, Sami was seen or someone was seen here on data. Of course, uh, the, these companies have, have e-commerce, so, so so they know all their data. So we have data, so we, we can use this data where the municipalities take over the logistics for the procurement of, of, of transport services, which is because it's divided, you know, so we have two, two of them, right? Yes, please. So, so uh, this is not just venture. We have 45 out of 290 municipalities, 50%, every seventh municipality have done this uh, from 1999 and, and during a, a, a 22 years period. Next, please. So, so we we should also look at you know how this has gone about because the the median the median municipality in Sweden is very small. It's it's only fifteen thousand um, nine hundred inhabitants. That means that one hundred five hundred and forty five um, thousand uh, municipalities is, is less than than uh, sixteen thousand inhabitants. So, so they don't have the ability to to um, to uh, do this themselves, so, so they collaborate. And and um, uh, if you look at here, Vexher, so so Vexher, which is like uh, has been in the Resolve project, uh, they they next please, they have been in collaboration with with, with um, smaller municipalities, which gives them a, a better um, when it comes to, when it comes to um, uh, procurement, gives them a bigger opportunity to get. Better prices. Next, please. Uh, the result from from, from um, Vexher is that uh, they have dis decreased the number of trips to the entities by eighty two percent. They've gone from like nineteen hundred to three three hundred fifty uh, trips a week to the entities, and they have about four hundred fifty municipal en entities. Uh, so, so it, it's a very large. Then there are other, um, there are also other benefits because, uh, uh, especially when I come back to, to this, what we call the data. Uh, but when they have take over logistics, also they have to control the data, uh, the data uh, inside uh, or the internal data of the municipality, and and they save a lot of uh, hours uh, by just uh, getting this less. Um, number of, of, of um, deliveries, uh, which can be used for, for other things, you know, which is like uh, what we call in Sweden, like the, it, it, it's, it's like uh, increase the, um, well, it increase uh, the work, the working force without, you know, employing more, 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 um, uh, more people. Next, please. So, so what we have had um, is, is a national center for the last uh, three years. Uh, there are, uh, and, and we have been working, there is, here is, here is, you can win, it's, it's, unfortunately it's only in Swedish. Uh, in the end, I'm gonna, there are some, some English articles that you can read. But this, we have been work, we have been doing this by work, by, by uh, competence, um, uh, Trying to 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 increase the competence among the municipalities, you know, from the inside. Uh, uh, Sami here from Finland was was talking about, you know, consultants would say, you know, we'll do this without consultants because if you want to change the behavior, it has to come from inside. Next, please. Or we can take this is just some words. We can take the next one. Um, so, so to summarize, there is two articles here which um, 
which uh, uh, describes what municipal code disposition is about. Um, and then there's another one, uh, the last one, uh, about the procurement process. And, and the big benefits we've had in Sweden is that right now, the uh, private enterprise is, is starting to adapt part of, of these um, procurement processes, which has been done in the municipalities. So the municipalities, you know, by doing this, of course, it's, I mean, it, it, it is taxpayers' money, it costs money, but you have to do an investment, which is not like uh, the municipalities are, are used to do. But if you do that investment, it will, you know, be rings on the water, you know, and, and it, now we are also um, uh, improved uh, the urban logistics efficiency in, in, in the private enterprise. Thank you. Thank you, Olaf. Um, Lotte, can you just uh, pull up the presentation again? Uh, maybe slide six, where there is this uh, drawing. Um, just to, uh, yes, that one. Olaf, just uh, uh, so that you, you said that the municipalities have split the procurement into two. So on the left yeah. side, it would be all the different public entities belonging to the city procuring individually and being uh, uh, delivered from different suppliers everything to their address yeah and then okay a short one. answer we have we have done is 45 out of 290 municipalities done this you know on on the left side on the, we, we did a big study with, with the um, with the government and uh, on on an average shippers the uh, average administrator had 15 shippers and these were diminished to two one for groceries and one for 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 the office supplies and so on you know because okay do you, you, you well some you know, have, 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 have using one 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 um, traffic flow but it's it's very different like in in in, in the frequency of how of, of orders you know because groceries we have a lot more orders per week and, and office supplies, not like so, so, but still, I mean, you go from 15, 15 suppliers with their own transport flows to two transport flows. And so uh, a one procuring entity then is uh, a buying on behalf of all the uh, city public entities and is asking as delivery address to ship everything to a an area that is then the consolidation center and then a second procurement is to bring from this consolidation center to all the individual uh, addresses that's it correct i think uh, it's uh, marvelous and uh, as you say it can also interest uh, the private sector okay do we have a question to uh, olaf simon uh, we do yes uh, so you mentioned a mandatory obligation in co-distribution of goods. Uh, so the question is whether this means that uh, distribution is limited to organizations only working in that approved network. Uh, and if so, have Swedish cities not complained that this represents a monopoly or goes against market forces? Uh, and, and if they had, uh, what would your answer be in terms of that being constitutionally or legally allowed? Well, the problem is the market forces. And the market forces cannot fix this in themselves. That, that's the problem. So, so what's happening right now is exactly what we've done, like in, in, in public procurement, should be able to be done, you know, by, by the private enterprise. But it will not be done without regulation. Okay. That's it. I think you have no more uh, direct questions to all of, right? Um, one just came in asking uh, what kind of goods are part of the consolidation center? For the municipalities? Yeah. Yeah. 70% is groceries because we have preschools, schools, and elderly cares. All of them are, are buying 6% of all groceries in Sweden. 30% uh, is office supplies and other supplies, you know, for, for, for like uh, technical. Uh, um, entirely seen in the municipality, but, but it's, it's, it's mainly groceries. It's also now, um, we have the pandemic, okay? And one thing that 
municipalities in Sweden have shown these 45 that have done this, you know, that, that they have, they have uh, registers of all their um, entities, they know the volumes and so on, and they have like a robust uh, transport organization. The others haven't, you know, so when this pandemic came, they knew, you know, how much and where it should go. So, so it's like, uh, this is just a, for the last year, this kind of uh, 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 business model could be used for also this. Business model, that's the word, uh, that is my cue. Yeah. I would like uh, to open up the discussion to uh, uh, all the panel of uh, speakers, so please everybody turn on your cameras. And uh, to kick off the discussion is, in what way is it different to develop policies for urban logistics than for, for instance, uh, uh, cycling, given that logistics is an industry a business, private sector industry. So how should the policymakers uh, go about? And uh, please take the floor as you uh, uh, want to, just when you feel somebody else is speaking, then just let them. So first come, first serve. Um, uh, okay, I, I'll start. Uh, I think one point is that that you need to have maybe a different type of of cooperation, different kind of dialogue with the stakeholders. Then, then you you should always have that. Cities are getting better and better with that. But when it involves business creation and a kind of business um, enablement, business support, then then it is trickier. And and sometimes you maybe need to have a little bit different persons from, from city organizations to, to join that. But it's more straightforward city uh, traffic planners versus the, the cycling federation in, in, in when building bicycle lanes. But again, when it comes to business, it's it's a bit more trickier. So dialogue and, and, and getting better with that, I think that's our challenge at least. Um, Katerina, probably I can also contribute there. Uh, it's obvious that we need the capacity building for the municipalities and for the cities in, uh, in understanding the, um, let's say, the new context. Um, and that is something that in, in, in any case the municipalities should do. But uh, as I, um, uh, as also it is mentioned also in my presentation is that you definitely need to have some external support. It's, it might not be consultant, it might be an academia, it might be um, somebody else, an expert, uh, but it is better if you, if you get the person who can uh, um, understand the business dimension of, uh, of each one of the measures that we are discussing. Um, and also create the, the proper arguments. Um, uh, you may have that, you may analyze it, but how you present this in order the, the business sector to understand what could be the impact and the positive for them, the win or the lose situation, uh, you need uh, somebody to help there. Well, I, I think it's, it's very important. I think we are like in a, the future is going to change. And uh, my speech was that we need to radically change the uh, mindset of both the business and the government. And with densifications, especially in cities, and we know that, that, that all cities are going to be more dense because people are living going from rural to, to urban, we are not be able to, to uh, uphold the service without uh, without uh, having some kind of uh, regulation where 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 you know the the goods are coming in and but also you know opposite you know it's, it's a lot of waste that has come out you know and when in in an urban geography I'm, I'm 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 an urban geographer you know in in this in this perspective uh justification it's really happening fast i mean the 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 uh, uh, the area for for you know transportation both personal and and um, um, freight or, or goods you know is, is is diminishing very fast you know and and it, it is like a, it is it is uh, 
like 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 a, a debate or even like a competition. Uh, we we I just, I just we had like a seminar in Sweden, you know, couple, uh, last year before the pandemic, and 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 it was like the the public transport. Okay, we have tra public transport lanes, you know, for the buses and and the trams in Gothenburg, you know, and then. Uh, someone said, you know, okay, well, maybe we also have to, to put the goods there. And then the the person in, in charge said, for, for the publisher said, you know, are they going to use our lanes? I mean... I would really like to agree with uh, what, what Olaf said about having a new mindset. That That's absolutely, that's needed. Uh, especially now more and more when uh, the the uh, say the process of policy making it's it's been basically it's been the same for decades and it takes a long time lots of discussions and, and it's based on on long term evaluation of the of the change of the trends but now over the last few years we've seen new technology new equipment automated vehicles coming on on the streets and and now with with covid people changing their behavior really quickly and of course the, the city as a whole as an organization when it comes to traffic management as a whole and, and even especially the the policy making it it can't cope with that kind of quick pace and that's something you really need to have mindset to to just to be able to cope with the change and come up with the new ways of of managing that and then for logistics that can mean different things but uh, linking to what was just said about the, the bus lanes and, and the infrastructure in general it's about dynamic curb management we need to to look into how the street how the street side the the and even sidewalks how they are being used in in the future mm -hmm. when you have more and more different types of needs for them and, and if somebody has answers how to do that please tell me <laughs> um yeah to take from what sami said in fact we need to create to 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 create a situation that the city it will be in the in um, in the front of a, a city-led innovation. So, because things are changing, the industry is doing their own uh, adoptions of innovation. Um, uh, create uh, the um, uh, uh, create a mindset that says that okay, as a city, I have a role in drive this innovation um, uh, for for city logistics, also for mobility. However, uh, guaranteeing that the quality of life is at the level that I want. And then I create a framework in order to safeguard this uh, is also, um, uh, let's say, uh, a way of managing this change because the changes will come. Um, uh, putting the, the municipality and, and the, the city actors in, the, in, in a city-led innovation process is, uh, is something very good. That means try to see if there are these innovators here and if they give you good ideas to implement uh, for specific problems like the ones of the city logistics. I imagine it is quite uh, difficult for a city to uh, uh, gain credibility uh, um, when on the other side you have an industry that is working for efficiency. I, I can imagine that probably the operators say, leave us alone, we do not want to cooperate, we know how to efficiently plan our operations. So how do you go about to overcome this uh, reluctance to cooperate? Can I? I, think... can I... I I'm pretty old, you know, I'm almost 70. So I can say that is, excuse my word, bullshit. They don't know and they don't care. To, okay, so this is a very strong statement, of course, uh, when you need to collaborate with the industrial stakeholders, this is not the type of uh, statements. However, I, I fully understand what all of uh, uh, tries to say. Um, the, the, yeah, uh, first of all, the, the, the industrial stakeholders, the logistics is that they want, if possible, same solutions everywhere. You, you understand uh, the, the details of the world, they want to go in each one of the cities and, if possible, have a, 
um, specific ways of implementing their job. However, this is not possible. So to an extent, what Olaf says that, uh, in fact, they don't know, they want to just to do the job and then and, 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 and finish, it has, it has some level of, uh, of truth. But, the, but independent of that, the important thing is what the cities can do. And, and the only thing the cities have in their hands is the managing of the public space. So they can create a regulation, they can create access rights, they can say, I don't allow you to go there. They give, uh, um, let's say, per permissions for services and operations to happen in the cities, uh, in, 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 their, in, 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 the, in the in the urban space. So in fact, they should think on this and, um, and, uh, and, and, and use this uh, as, um, as a current stick um, in order to have the industrial stakeholders collaborated with them and find solutions that can be profitable or e enough efficient for, for everybody. Yeah, okay. I agree with you, Georgia. Absolutely. Because you have to look at, you have, you have the, if you have a change in business or if you have a change in market. Okay, market is, you know, innovation. And uh, actually, what you said here, I, I, from, from our, from my standpoint and from, from the research I work with, the only thing that can change uh, the market comes from either consumer pressure or regulation. The existent uh, business model will not do it because it will cause friction and they will lose money. Simon, why don't you read uh, to our panelists uh, the latest uh, contribution from the uh, chat to that? I think it's interesting. Okay, certainly. Uh, so it's not a, not a question, just a statement uh, saying there's a fundamental conflict of interest between public authorities uh, aiming to reduce the negative transportation externalities whilst trying to increase the attractiveness of cities for inhabitants. Uh, versus private companies seeking to operate at the lowest cost while still delivering a high quality service or product in order to satisfy the customer's expectations. Absolutely. Well, it's all with the balance. Is... Okay, oh, Samia, excuse me. No, just a quick remark that it's always a balancing act in, in everything yeah. and, and how to do it with logistics, which has maybe a little a, its own peculiarities in that that equation that it's not it's, it's it's not easy and again we i don't think any city has has a perfect way of doing it but that's what we're trying and learning at the time no from our standpoint you know is it, i i I'm, I'm getting really into this now uh, from our standpoint it is it is that uh, you cannot compare a uh, 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 private company you know with with the uh, with the with the local authorities or the authorities because a private company is not if it look in the transport industry it's not to move goods from a to b it's for them is to make a profit however a municipality as taking care of taxpayers money and environment their goal is more than just uh, business economy it is also the, the, the social uh, economic values that comes with diminishing uh, CO2, uh, diminishing uh, traffic con uh, congestion. And, and you cannot, this is why it's a dilemma, uh, because I mean, you, you cannot put, you, you cannot burden individual companies with this. That's why we come to the question of, I'm not saying that we should have a regulation, I'm saying it's, the, the question of regulation has not been been, been debated in especially in r d enough in eu because we have had so much of research going on that we're going to have a win-win situation and we cannot have a win-win situation if we're going to it's for example you know diminish the number of vehicle kilometers driven you know for travel you know it, it, it's it's, it's we, we're going to then someone has to and, and what I think, you know, it, it's, it's what, what I've been working on for the last 25 years is this, the case of urban consolidation centers, because then we can, you know, have different transport flows goes into one and we can, I mean, for, for, for the environment, the best thing is that we can take, take out trucks, you know, if, if, if two, 
if, if one track can do the same as three or four tracks can do, we take away those others. But uh, I think, uh, well, here it's about a question of managing uh, negative uh, externalities uh, of a private sector, uh, externalities uh, that affect uh, everybody and that uh, ultimately are in, uh, impacting uh, negatively the budget uh, of, uh, of uh, cities. Um, but um, I think still it's interesting uh, to seek uh, uh, business models and win-win solutions because uh, delivering trucks uh, in stop and go uh, conditions in traffic jams, especially in the large cities, uh, I imagine is not a profitable uh, uh, um, and pleasant uh, activity either. So maybe uh, incurring a little bit less kilometers uh, and uh, delivering to an, an, an easy to reach uh, consolidation hub afterwards uh, uh, frees uh, capacities uh, to do more profit uh, generating uh, uh, journeys. So I, I think this is a very interesting uh, model to explore uh, that you have uh, explained, yeah. Olaf. Yeah, if I can stay on this. Uh, Go ahead, George. Sorry, sorry. So actually, um, 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 the mapping the value interactions of the of the major poles that are uh, around this creation of uh, of, uh, of solutions for uh, for uh, alleviate the problems uh, created by city logistics so this municipality the logistics industry and the consumer is very important because then uh, um, the um, city uh, uh, creates the um, let's say the, the basis for defining uh, what city wants for the consumers and for also for the for the economy of the city and, and then uh, it's not just to, um, to find win-win situations. Now we are, we, the research is working on, uh, on conflict resolution models. So you can have a consolidation center outside the city. You can have micro consolidations in, uh, in, in the city environment, uh, going more closely to, to the destination. Um, alternative, judge alternative solutions on the basis of the minimum cost for everybody. It's another logic of selecting measures. So, but this needs to uh, to be based on a very good mapping of value interaction. So what the consumers are asking from the city, what the city is ready to give to the consumer, how what is the power they're getting from that in order to present uh, a, a specific, specific request to the logistics industry. So again, uh, this starts uh, from uh, data and making um, understanding. Uh, so I don't know, Sami, if you have another uh, comment on that. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Um, no, I was just Go ahead. Uh, talking to my with myself that that is it win win we are seeking or less of a lose lose. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> actually, one one thing to, to point here is that it, it's also the quality of the vehicle kilometers. It, it's it's a one thing to try 15 kilometers with a truck in a city center or do that with a bicycle of, of, or even 10 bicycles of, of doing more uh, or, or so say smaller deliveries but still so that's something that we need to, to look at how can we get to a situation where each package is being delivered with a appropriate uh, vehicle uh, so big amounts of, of uh, cargo with a truck but kind of decrease the, the amount of, of the vehicle when, when you can and then mm -hmm. There are different ways how to, of course, do that with regulation, but at the same time trying to find those win-wins, hopefully, in the end, and, and create opportunities for the companies. Because uh, there are there are benefits from that as well. Like good example is that a, a delivery made with a truck that you park, the parking takes time, and then, and then you lower the, the back end, and then just just that detailed logistics of doing that last mile. That takes time, whereas uh, this is what I get from the companies. The guy has barely lowered the, the, the back of the truck down and get the package in his hand, whereas this guy doing the same delivery with the bicycle, he's already on his way to the next stop. So there's there's uh, different ways to look at it, and then how can we support that kind of development? And and, and maybe the consolidation centers that they have traditionally be they are kind of directing the uses of vehicles to certain types and, 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 and size of vehicles. Whereas now we are looking in, in many cities 
the concept of, of micro hubs what can that be can they they can be different size and and, and place and, and all that but just learning and so what would be the model that would help best the logistics companies to do those different types of, of plasma deliveries and, and so that actually the, the impact the negative impact of logistics could be smaller at least a little bit different type uh, and so on but but that's that's an interesting area that we are happy to explore more at the moment okay. i just want to clarify around thing you know with the win-win i understand you know that's very pro provocative uh, but, but what's what's happening is of course if you increase the fill rate and in sweden we have we have studies even though i mean it's very hard to get because data as Julia said, you know, data is, is the key. But the fill rate is 20 to 30 percent. So if we increase the fill rate, of course, uh, the win-win for some is not going to be a win-win because some are going to, you know, be, be put out of business. But the ones that are still in business, they will earn more money because they will have more goods per. Uh, kilometer driven, you know. So, so, so I mean, so, so it, it is. It's a change of 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 business model, you know. Which and uh, what we think then is, uh, if we look at, of course, if we look at like in the uh, in, in the government sector, it has to be you know regulations. But if you look at it in from from like a standpoint uh, of, of private energy, it's the shipper. So it's the transport buyer in their procurement that has to demand this. So, so, and and this is still, I mean, still the problem. We have big studies. We have a study here from University of Gothenburg, 175 um, uh, companies that it, were included, you know, and and the price of the shipments is is like 60 percent, you know, of, of, of the decision where environmental factors are less than 5%. So it is, it is a very change of mindset, you know, that has, it, that has to come. But, but as I said, you know, earlier, I think, you know, if, if you look at it, you know, one, one thing is, is, is the pressure from the consumer. The consumer don't want, don't, will not in the future want to have, you know, a lot of carbon waste. So, so it's, but, but the win-win is, I mean, you cannot you cannot have a change with the win-win. So so it it is it's just who's gonna lose, who's gonna win. Absolutely, Lokia is what I said. We need to maximize the benefit yeah. for many or to minimize the, the negative impact for many. These yeah. are the solutions that they will uh, that they will continue. However, we I take from what you said about the the seepers and the and the and, and the owners of the cargo, and finally the consumer, um, we have to, we need to hit, to keep in our mind that the, the the last mile is indeed the last mile of a huge of, of a huge chain. So there are also other policy measures and other initiatives that they are trying through digitization to change the the way the the the, the, the big supply chain is, um, uh, is is organized and how. Technology and um, and and, um, and and mind change and operation change are, are coming to this uh, to this um, uh, logistic chain before the the last mile. And of course, when that is will be achieved, uh, of course the last mile um, it will be easy. What happened is that um, as the the cities become bigger and bigger and the complexity is is, is big is uh, is increasing. Uh, it was. It is very much necessary to act at city level, which push changes also to the rest of the supply chain and the logistics chain. And and this is something that we should keep in our mind uh, that when we change things, uh, there are other impacts for the industrial stakeholders that probably we cannot realize. At the end, only when the city, empowered by its consumer and the citizens knows what they want to do uh, they can create the they can create the first step of, of a framework of regulation and then they can start building measures in collaboration with industrial stakeholders this is the the, the must you need to do the, the cities needs to define the, what is they how they want to operate in 10 years in five years from now if not 
then it's going to be again one measure after the other measure and probably the one it will repeat or yeah. uh, change the other the preview this is already a, a good uh, a last round of uh, a statement uh, contribution uh, georgia um we are coming to the end uh, of our webinar. I would invite uh, each of you uh, for a last uh, statement, uh, a recommendation to take away for the urban policy makers that are listening to us. Ooh. How much time do I have for that? <laughs> One minute. Oh, um, I, I, I would call for a dynamic approach, agility, even, and 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 look maybe beyond the the, the just the scope of logistic. Uh, what does logistics put in next to to other fields of life? Uh, so logistics is is often considered as as just logistics, and don't you should have a bigger picture in in your head. Uh, of course, then parking is a big big problem all the time, uh, as as mentioned. How can you how can you ease that? Uh, one way is is to provide dedicated parking space, but there's probably much more you can do in in terms of again the dynamic approach. And then again, okay, my main point here today was was the usage of data. We we haven't really explored not nearly enough that what you can do with data uh, for logistics from say from cities towards logistics. If you get half of that in your policy, I would be really happy already. <laughs> Should I go or Georgia? I can go. Oh, oh, well, I will say, you know, be brave and do the same thing that you have done by public transport. Do that in urban freight. Then I think it's it's my turn. Um, uh, I, I would suggest uh, continuous and systematic work on city logistics. This, the municipalities, they need to understand that this is their job because it's going to be again solved through regulation, through their, uh, um, let's say, um, position on how their city should look like after a few years in, in regards to this, uh, to this issue of city logistics. And the second suggestion is that um, you need to do together with your citizens, together with your um, um, logistics industry. And a part of what all of me said, uh, being uh, brave, being open, communicate the conclusions of any study, of any problem, the positions of the logistics industry to also towards the consumer in order to make them all feel responsible for that. And finally, use the public space allocation as one of your strong, I mean, municipality strong point in regulating things, in collecting data, in creating the future of, of city logistics, of efficient city logistics. Michal, are you still there? You have actually not participated in the panel discussion. Uh, you have uh, sneaked uh, away, maybe uh, as a policy maker uh, from Warsaw, you also want to have a last uh, contribution and last recommendation and takeaway. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm not an expert like like uh, friends on the on the screen, uh, but uh, what is important for us to like uh, Georgia said, just to be brave and to do something with with that because uh, it's uh, it's obvious that that uh, it's not enough space for a cars to deliver all goods in the all in the cities in the city centers so. Uh, we have to do something with that, and uh, I don't know. Uh, for for me, uh, it's uh, it's very important to uh, it's very important to to do some little steps. But of course, uh, we need to uh, work together because if uh, if uh, nobody wants to. Uh, if uh, want to participate in that, and of course, after the action, there will be no uh, education. The uh, 
uh, to education about it. I think it's the it's very hard, very hard job. So um, it's very important to do in the different ways uh, to change the to the, change the policy of uh, logistic logistic plans. Thank you for that. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, it was a very animated uh, discussion. Uh, maybe for the audience, uh, it was very hard uh, uh, to start this webinar because we were having already a heated discussion with the uh, uh, speakers uh, uh, before going live. So uh, I think you could uh, feel this uh, um, appetite uh, for interaction on this topic. I think uh, the message uh, to urban policymakers is um, the logistics uh, challenge is not going away, it is probably going to get worse and uh, so better think about addressing it uh, today uh, than to waiting uh, until the last moment, until uh, the private sector has already, uh, let's say, laid out uh, all the rules of the game. Um, I think, uh, even though there seems to be an apparent uh, conflict of interest, um, there will always be in the private sector, the ones which are willing to make uh, a first move, uh, mm -hmm. seek the collaboration uh, of those who are willing to explore and willing to uh, evolve, and then uh, um, maybe work uh, on just uh, one little area with uh, a couple of players uh, and, and, and start as a pilot. I mean, we have seen uh, Sami's uh, example has also started from a pilot and then being rolled out, uh, so there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you keep the whole uh, process uh, in view. So, also interesting remark, uh, the thing about the last mile, and the remark to do with logistics, the same as being done with uh, um, other transports, uh, other mobility policy. So uh, this is a good link uh, to announce uh, our next uh, webinar uh, on this uh, topic uh, in September. We will have um, a webinar on electric cargo bikes uh, in, in urban freight transport and as a last uh, mile solution. So uh, this will tie in uh, with this uh, debate uh, today and uh, show how, let's say, the move uh, from a, a, a large uh, truck uh, with diesel or maybe a more sustainable fuel then uh, is, uh, is going to a fleet of electric or bicycles, uh, a light and um, low carbon in line with um, the low carbon strategy of, uh, of the cities. So um, thank you, uh, everybody, for your contributions, for your preparation. Thank you to the audience uh, for your patience uh, and uh, for listening. Thank you to my colleagues uh, uh, for the support. And I hope that uh, you have uh, enjoyed uh, the last 90 minutes. And with that, uh, I would like to conclude and wish everybody an excellent afternoon. Goodbye. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you, all. Thank you. Bye. Bye.